as mentioned in the previous video, I want to work a bit on those areas where the wire is and want to give those more detail. Actually, I want to replace the wire with geometry. And to do that, I'll be diving in and working in the surface geometry here. And I'll actually disable the wire geometry totally. Just going to work on this geometry here where I create the wire here. And I want to do this in a weird order of operation, which you would normally not do, just to illustrate a point here. So what I want to do is on the resample node here, I want to enable the tangent u attribute and call it n for normal. What the tangent u attribute is, is just the tangent of this curve saved for each point. That means the vector pointing from one point on the curve to the next point on the curve, connecting those individual points. And by saving it as a normal attribute here, I can use it in a copy to points to orient copies onto those points here. Maybe let's use a box, scale this down to 0 0.01, like so, and widen the copy to points, making sure that on the copy to points I check pack and instance, then highlighting it. And all of this are transparent boxes. They are transparent because the material I assigned is a glass material. So on the OBJ tab here, on the render tab, let's just disable, delete the material so we can see solid boxes here. So I'm instancing those individual boxes onto those points that I created using that resample here. And maybe, just maybe, I'll space those resampled points apart a tiny bit. And let's say I want to copy the boxes only on a random subset of those points, so randomly selecting a few points. Well, of course, you could select random points previously. However, it would require you to chain together a few nodes, be a bit hacky, or write a few lines of VEX. And with the 19 side effects labs, chips with a labs random selection, which is a handy single click node, which can be used to select individual random points. In this case, I want to select half of my points, so a ratio of 0 0.5. And you can see automatically this node is set up to color the selected points blue. However, I don't want to color them. Instead, I want to create a group from that selected points called selected. And let's just uncheck the colorization here. So now when middle mousing here, I can see I've got half of my points in this selected group and it's a random selection that's in here. To use them, I'll just set the target points group to selected. And now I only instance and copy those boxes onto the random selected points originating from my lines here. Let's just copy the copy to points, paste it, and maybe wire up a sphere into it instead of a box, which I also scale down to be 0.01 units in size. I'm gonna wire that in here as well. So now those boxes have been replaced by those spheres. However, they are using the exact same points as my previous boxes. So instead of copying those spheres onto the selected point group, I want to copy them onto each point that is not in the selected group. And I can do that by just adding an exclamation mark in front of this group here, telling Houdini to use every point that is not in the selected group. And now if I merge those both streams, both the boxes and the spheres, I can see I now have all points back together just randomly instance boxes or spheres onto each point. One last thing I want to do is add a group promote after the copy to points, which copied the boxes onto the selected points. So I'm going to wire that in and use this group promote to promote from points to primitives, the selected group. And let's give it a new name and call it boxes. So in effect, what we created here is now that the copy to points created instances for each of those boxes. We now have all these instances put into a prim group that's just storing which of those primitives are boxes and which are not. So down here arrives a stream consisting out of those 2,430 something primitives of which half are in the boxes group, which are the boxes. Say I want to replace these primitives with something a bit more elaborate, maybe a model of a molecule. Shout out to the science visualization crowd out there. I'll just build cheap and maybe not entirely accurate models of molecules using a platonic set to be a dodecahedron. Let's highlight this. So this platonic solid here, turning it into a wireframe using the wireframe node, which I'll then convert to polygons using the convert node. And then maybe using another copy to points to copy the platonic solid, which I want to transform and scale down a bit before I do that. I'll take the platonic, transform it to only a quarter of its original scale, like so, and then copy that onto its original platonic solids edge points, so resulting in that, and then merging it with the wireframe, resulting in this fantasy molecule here. Let's copy this whole tree here, paste it one more time, and maybe create a second fantasy molecule by just setting the platonic solids type to octahedral, like so. Okay, say I have only this geostream containing these individual spheres 
and boxes and they are oriented in space and I would like to replace them and I don't have access to just plugging them into these copy to points because this geostream for some reason is all I have. Up until now that would result in a fair bit of wrangling either via bobs or backs and a bit of head scratching. However with Houdini 19 side effects introduce a new node called pack inject and what this thing can do is replace one or more of these instances with another geometry and also make sure that new geometry is packed is instanced and is transformed to be on the same spot in the same orientation as the original geometry. Let me show you what I mean. These are the two molecules that I want to replace those spheres and boxes with. They are still a bit big, so let's use another transform set to a uniform scale of 0 0.01. Copy and paste this and use one for our dodecahedral molecule and one for our icosahedral molecule here and then Let's use the pack inject and wire in our original geostream, the one with the spheres and the cubes. And in the second node, wire in our molecule, our dodecahedral molecule in this case, and highlight the packed inject here. And you can see automatically and quickly, it replaced all geometry that came in through the original stream. That means both spheres and boxes with this dodecahedral molecule. And when we middle mouse on it, resulting geostream, we can still see that this are packed primitives. So they will render fast and won't clog up your scene. However, in this case, I only want to replace the boxes with that dodecahedral molecule, which I can do because up here I created a primitive group. So my boxes are in their own primitive group here. And I can select that group on the packed inject node by just selecting it under the group here. So now we are only replacing the boxes and you can see these spheres are still kept. Let's just copy that pack inject and paste it down here, wire it up after the first packed inject and replace the dodecahedral molecule here with the icosahedral molecule here. And now our boxes get replaced with that icosahedral molecule. And you can see the molecule is also oriented in the way the boxes were previously. However, in this case, I want to replace the spheres with the icosahedral molecule. So I can do that again by selecting everything but the boxes group using an exclamation mark in front of it. And now you can see I have both my boxes and my spheres replaced by those respective molecules. Let's just find an interesting angle, maybe save this and start our Solaris desktop. Let's look through our camera one and make sure we are on our stage viewport here. And we can see a very fuzzy rendering that is because we didn't set the camera's focal point correctly. So let's go back to our OBJ level and either on our OBJ camera here, let's just I don't know, frame this and make sure the camera isn't locked to the viewport anymore. And like in previous versions of Houdini, selecting the camera, making sure the tool handles are selected and then over the viewport pressing Z we can bring up the focus handle and just move that in way closer to focus on those areas nearby here, maybe like so. Going back to our Solaris desktop and switching it to the stage viewport. So now you can see we are focused on these glass molecules. However, if you want to easily adjust focus in here in the stage context, what you can do is with the camera locked to the viewport, just move the camera slightly and Houdini will automatically create an edit cam one node for you that will override or manipulate certain data coming into Solaris from your normal OBJ level that specifies the camera's parameters. For example, under the sampling tab here under the focus distance, you can set this to set or create a value and then you can dial in your focal distance directly in here and reset the focus. Same goes of course for the F stop here. So by setting this a good bit higher, we should get a bit more depth of field like so and setting it smaller, we should narrow the depth of field like so. So with this node, you can easily override your camera settings coming in from OBJ. So again, let's recap what we did here. In Solaris, we edited our camera settings using the edit cam node here, overriding some of its parameters and in our build desktop on the OBJ level, not only did we in here copy geometry onto the wires we created, in this case, just consisting out of boxes and spheres, but also we went over a very easy technique to replace this geometry in a pack primitive stream using the pack inject node. One of those nodes that side effects weirdly doesn't talk much about in their presentations, but I think a node that will come in very handy in a bunch of setups in the real life. As always, we are intrigued to see what you guys cook up using that technique. And if you want to support us or want to learn more about Houdini, you might want to consider becoming a patron of ours. And to everyone already supporting us, thanks so much for doing so. Without your help, Intagma in this form just would not be possible. And a very special thank you goes out to important looking pirates, Rodeo Effects, Sean Edwards, Chris Abair, and Rafik Anadol. Thanks so much, folks. So until next time, as always, it is cheers and goodbye.